Well, dear viewers, welcome to our channel. In this video, we are going to see the operation of this manual transmission, how it operates, and the components and their functions that we are going to discuss. So when we look at this manual transmission, this is a four-speed manual transmission, four forward and one reverse speed manual transmission. Here we have the clutch. The clutch is connected to the crankshaft, and that will transmit power to this input gear. The input shaft is actually connected to the clutch, and this is the input gear. That input gear is constantly in mesh with this counter shaft. This is a counter shaft where we have the different counter gears connected. And when we determine the gears, the speed gears, when the smaller gear on the counter shaft is driving the larger gear on the output shaft, this is the output shaft, the one that is more rotating is the output shaft. When the Smaller gear on the counter shaft rotates, is driving the larger gear on the output shaft. We have large torque because the smaller gear has to turn much more in order to make the larger gear rotate once. So that will be how torque is multiplied. When the speed is reduced, torque will be multiplied. So based on that principle, we can determine which gear belongs to first gear, which gear belongs to second gear, and the like. So for example, on this transmission, the smallest gear, this is the smallest gear, when power flow is from this smallest gear to the larger gear, that is first gear. And the next gear that is larger in size is this gear. So when this gear is driving this gear and power is taken out from this speed gear, that will be second gear. <laughs> and the next larger gear is this one. So this will be the third gear. Fourth gear is direct drive. When we see the shifting mechanism, first gear is a sliding mesh type. So when first gear is selected, this gear will slide on the counter gear. And as you can see, when the main shaft is rotated, when the output shaft is rotated, this speed gear is connected to the output shaft because of this hub. So this gear will slide onto this spark gear, then that will be first gear. So shifting for first gear will be accomplished by simply sliding this gear and engaging it. Look, now first gear is engaged. So on first gear, power flow will be from the input gear to the counter shaft input. Then from this, this is rotating with this because they are on the same shaft. And finally, this will drive this. The smaller gear, the smallest gear on the counter shaft is driving the largest gear on the output shaft. This will be first gear. Now then, first gear will be followed by second gear. The shift mechanism for second gear is this. This is the shift linkage. Shift fork is here. This is the shift sleeve for second gear. Now when second gear is engaged, Due to the gear size, there is a speed variation. There is a speed variation as we shift from first gear to second gear. There is a speed variation between the output shaft and this speed gear. Why? Due to the variation in the gear size, because the output shaft was rotating at this speed, at first gear's speed. Now when we try to shift it to second gear, there is a speed variation between the output shaft and this gear. So that has to be matched. For the gears to smoothly engage, that has to be matched. Look, how do we do that? That is done by this synchro mesh arrangement. See this ring? This ring is a synchronizer ring. It is rotating with this hub. This hub is actually connected to the output shaft. So the hub is connected to the output shaft. When this control, when this when this synchronizer ring is pressed onto the speed gear, friction takes place and that friction will equalize the speed of the output shaft with the speed of this gear. In order to do that, power flow to the output shaft has to be interrupted by the clutch. So the driver will depress the clutch pedal, that will stop power flow to the transmission gearbox. Then he will force 
this sleeve to the right. Now when the sleeve is pushed to the right, see, it will press the synchronizer ring onto the speed gear. Now the sleeve is sitting between the speed gear and the hub. So now second gear is selected. When third gear is selected, now because the output shaft is being driven at second gear speed, which is lower than that of this gear's speed, which is the third gear, <coughs> the speed of this output shaft and the gear has to be synchronized again. So the driver will depress the clutch pedal and then disengage second gear, and then third gear will be selected. When selecting third gear again, this synchronizer ring has to be pressed onto the speed gear's conical friction surface. That will cause friction and equalize the speed of this gear to the speed of the output shaft. In order to do that, clutch will be depressed, power flow will be interrupted, then the shift mechanism will press the synchronizer ring onto the speed gear, then when the speed is equalized, gear will be selected in such a manner. This is third gear. When it comes to fourth gear, fourth gear is a direct drive. See, this is a conical friction surface for fourth gear. It is on the input shaft. So when this hub is connected to this gear, that will be fourth gear. Fourth gear is a direct drive, this is how force gear is selected. So these are the four forward speeds. Now let's see how reverse gear is selected. Reverse gear selection is done by simply inserting an idler gear between two speed gears. For example, when first gear was selected previously, this was engaged to this spur gear. That will be a first gear. Now they are not connected. When idler gear is inserted, in such a manner that it will connect on one end to this gear and on the other end to this gear, then that idler will change the direction of rotation and it will reverse the motion flow and then the car will be driven in reverse. So in order to do that, there is an idler gear back there. Gear, the one that is rotating is an idler gear. So when reverse is selected, what we do is we shift that idler gear to this side. When that idler gear is shifted this way, one end of the idler gear will engage with this. The other end of the idler gear will engage with this. So it means this gear and this gear are connected in with the help of the idler gear. Let's see how that is done. Look. Now it is in reverse because the idler gear is connecting these two gears. So power will flow in such a manner, from the input to the, uh, to the counter shaft, then from this counter shaft small gear to the idler gear, from the idler gear to this first gear speed gear. That way, the vehicle direction of rotation will be reversed. Now let's power it up and see how the gear selection is done. Now gear is in neutral, there is no power flow, as you can see the output shaft is not rotating, but the counter shaft is rotating, so it means the gear is in neutral. Now when we want to engage first gear, first we will depress the clutch pedal, then after pressing the clutch pedal, we will engage First gear. Power flow will be from the input to the counter shaft, then from this counter shaft, speed gear to the first speed gear. First gear, this is connected to the output shaft. To shift it to second gear, first clutch will be depressed, see power flow is interrupted, then it will be brought back to neutral. Then, look at this, second gear. Now power flow will be from the input to the counter shaft. 
Then from the counter shaft, this is speed gear, this is for second gear, to the second gear output. Then from this speed gear, through this shift sleeve and hub assembly, it will come to the output shaft. Let's put it on third gear. Clutch will be pressed again, power flow is interrupted, bring it back to neutral. Then, third gear. Now the power flow is from this to the counter shaft, from this counter shaft speed gear, from this gear to the third, then through this hub and synchronizer assembly to the output shaft. Let's put it on fourth gear, which is direct drive. Clutch will be pressed back to neutral. Fourth is direct drive. Now, when the gear is selected on fourth gear, the power flow will be from the input shaft. It passes directly to the output shaft through this hub and synchronizer assembly it will directly pass to the output shaft without no need of coming to the counter shaft. This is fourth gear. Let's put it on reverse and see how it operates. Now when selecting reverse gear, the light will be pressed. See, now the output shaft is rotating in reverse direction. So power flow will be from the input shaft to the counter shaft, from the counter shaft to this gear, from this gear to the idler gear, from the idler gear to first speed gear. Then from first speed gear through the hub to the output shaft. See direction of rotation is changed. This is rotating in this direction, whereas the rest of the gears are rotating to the previous direction of rotation. Only the direction of rotation of this hub assembly is reversed. That means because this is now connected to the output shaft, the output shaft direction of flow is also changed. Now this is how the gear shifting takes place. Now let's see what keeps the gears in their shifted position. Once gear is selected, for example, once first gear is selected, it will remain in first gear unless the driver intentionally shifted out of that first gear. What keeps it in that position? We have a lock mechanism. Right here we have a lock mechanism. Let me show you in a closer view. You see here we have grooves and there are spring loaded balls. Those spring loaded balls keep this shift selector in a selected position. For example now it is on neutral. The ball is sitting on the inner dent. When this shift is shifted to that side, the ball will sit in this cavity. When it is shifted to this side, the ball will sit in this cavity. So that will prevent this from getting out of the selected position. For example, look what is happening when I select it. See, now the ball which was previously in this cavity is now transferred to the first cavity. So this selector will remain locked in here due to the spring-loaded ball. We call them descent balls. When it is shifted out, it will be like so.
And besides, there are also shift balls which are acting in a horizontal direction, preventing selection of multiple gears at the same time. So this is how power selection and speed selection is taking place in a manual transmission. From that selected gearbox, power will flow to the output shaft. Power will flow to the output shaft through this joint. Here we have a universal joint followed by a slip joint. The universal joint is basically there to compensate for any angle variation as the vehicle is being driven on an irregular road. When the vehicle is moving up and down due to that irregular road, there is obviously angle variation that will be compensated by the universal joint. And there is a slip joint here, which is basically a long spline, and that will compensate for any variation of length as the vehicle is being driven on an irregular road. And finally, that power will be transferred to the differential. The differential will change the direction of rotation by 90 degree. It will split that power flow, and that power will be split to the left and right wheel. The differential is here also to compensate for any speed variation between the left and the right wheel. For example, when the vehicle is cornering, there is obviously a speed variation. The inner wheel is running slower than the outer wheel. That speed variation is allowed and accommodated by the differential. So this is how the manual transmission operates. If you like this video, don't forget to smash the like button. And if you are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe, guys. Thank you for watching.